So we're going to work on the basic physics now. It's really important. When we design and build buildings in the traditional North American way right now, we're really ending up with buildings that, you know, they, they, they can perform pretty crappy and we're not going to run into a lot of physics problems as long as you're not doing really stupid stuff like double vapor barriers or creating leaks in the building that are going to put bulk moisture in. But if we're being reasonably traditional in our approach to construction, what we do is we build a really crappy envelope and then we put a big massive heating system like this one in and cooling system. We got this big jet engine so we can rely on our mechanical system to dry out our, our mistakes. But in what we're doing with our increased insulation levels, our higher performing assemblies in our roofs and walls and floors, and then minimizing our mechanical systems, we no longer get this crutch of the jet engine. So we have to design buildings that will actually work naturally, that will actually work honestly within the, the world of physics. So understanding this is really important. Three basic things. Heat flows from a greater concentration to a lower concentration, from hot to cold. When you put air in or take air out of a, of a space, it's going to equalize. If it doesn't, it blows apart, like when a tornado comes and drops the pressure so fast that it can't equalize through, and we see like that, right? And the last piece is moisture moves from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. That doesn't mean higher humidity. Humidity is relative. I'm talking about absolute. So how many molecules of water, how many are in versus that space? They're going to move and equalize. This is basic physics. So we use that to our advantage. If we ignore it, our buildings will fail.